morning, Kyle's got the reading for you. If you're using your pew Bible, it's on page 1263. It's Acts chapter 8 and 36 through 40. So you've already heard this once or twice before. But we're going to call our attention back to uh, the Philip and the Ethiopian. Uh, so Acts chapter 8 and verse 36. Thank you, Kyle. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Uh, we ask you now, Lord, that uh, you would open up our ears and our hearts to be receptive to the things of the Holy Spirit. Uh, please, dear Father, help us uh, to walk with you in the holiness and righteousness all our days. For Jesus Christ's sake we pray. Amen. All right, uh, so as I said, we've been looking at the story of the Ethiopian official now for a couple of weeks. Uh, God sent him salvation in a very remarkable way. Uh, the narrative of Acts, of course, has been moving now outward from Jerusalem, uh, where the gospel first uh, had begun to be preached, and now out into the wider world. You know, after some months or a year or two, maybe, of being more or less centered in uh, one city in Jerusalem, but sort of growing by leaps and bounds, I think until the city was bursting at the seams with Christians, uh, the, the young church was scattered, if you'll recall, by an outbreak of uh, severe uh, persecution. And the believers went out into uh, Judea and beyond. And this chapter, chapter 8 of Acts, uh, has told us how the gospel was first preached in Samaria. That was the first half of the chapter. And then many villages of the Samaritans bringing very great joy to that region. And now this man, this story, this man's completely a foreigner. He's from an entirely different country. He's brought to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we get to see him, you know, right off into the sunset, taking the good news home with him. Uh, so today I want to take one last look at this incident and see how it uh, concludes. So far we have talked about how God uh, and his choreography uh, arranged everything just so, just so that this uh, encounter could happen. And then uh, last time we considered in a little depth the things that from the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures that Philip discussed with the Ethiopian, uh, most particularly uh, Isaiah 53, which is a chapter I would recommend to you again and again. Uh, but of course, there's many other chapters and things in the Old Testament scriptures that pointed to uh, the Messiah and how he would accomplish uh, the redemption of, of man. So uh, if you like, we've covered the beginning and the middle uh, of the episode, so today the close of it. So Philip has showed this man all that the Holy Scriptures, uh, how, how all the Scriptures pointed to this one man who just recently, in fact, had been crucified, buried, but then raised from the dead to ransom us all from our sins. Jesus Christ. And the Ethiopian was granted understanding of the word of God. He's fully convinced, as you just heard. He believes that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And now on coming to a place where there's uh, some water, by the way, he is prompted to ask, what hinders me from being baptized? In other words, is there any reason why I can't or shouldn't be baptized right away? Uh, and so I think it will do us good to uh, discuss baptism, particularly uh, when is it appropriate? Hey, what's baptism for and when is the right time? Uh, now the short answer is right away. As soon as a person is convinced that Jesus Christ is the Savior and is ready to pledge allegiance to him. Uh, the book of Acts, uh, of course, is the record of the beginning of the gospel uh, church. If we want to understand what Christianity is, 
and what its doctrines are and what its practices are supposed to be, here's where we look. And we see what did the apostles do and what did the first leaders of the church, uh, what, did, what did they do and teach? You know, here we are 2,000 years downstream. Time gone by has, uh, has um, produced a large variety of practices and teachings across the church worldwide. But if we want the truth, we go to the New Testament documents and we look at what did Jesus' own hand-picked emissaries and, and uh, their followers do and teach? And with respect to baptism, we consistently see that people in the New Testament are baptized upon hearing, thoroughly understanding, and receiving the gospel by repentance and commitment. Who is Jesus and what has he done for us? You know, why do we need him? What's man's condition and what's our standing before God? And how shall we stand in the judgment? Right? What does it mean to be reconciled to God? Uh, what's the kingdom of God that he, he promised, and how can we enter it? Right? What does it mean that Jesus is God's son and his chosen one, his anointed one? Uh, what does John 3.16 mean that God gave his only son that we might not perish, but have uh, everlasting life? Those things have to be answered and understood Right? The mind and the heart have to be convinced that Jesus is the way. He's the one. Right? God is going to give him the world for his possession. And someday he is going to come and take possession of it. And every tribe and nation is going to serve him. And I am deciding to follow Jesus and to be loyal to him. And God has made known to me that Jesus is the Lord of creation and in him there's pardon for all my many sins, and they rescue even from death. And baptism is the act that marks the turning point of a life. Right? It is the point at which I declare that I understood, I accept God's pardon by the blood of Christ, and I profess my allegiance to the Son of God, the King. I'm convinced that he lives that he can save me. His way is the way of righteousness, goodness, and peace, and truth, and blessing, and, and I am putting ignorance, and darkness, and selfishness, and lust, and greed, and all that behind me. I am coming out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. Praise be to the name of Jesus. No one is baptized un unless they understand those things and make a commitment to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Conversely, what we see here is that when there is a clear understanding of Christ and a belief that through his sacrifice, God grants us the remission of all our sins and, and much more besides, and when there is a giving of oneself to uh, obey Christ and, and live for his service, then baptism is immediately appropriate. What hinders me from being baptized? Well, nothing at all, if you trust in the Lord Jesus with all your heart. Confess the Lord Jesus before men, and he will confess you before the angels in heaven. Wash your sins away. Christ cleanses you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, do we understand? Baptism is your acted response to the good news, where you visibly and publicly mark the point of renewal, and you declare your intention to follow Jesus Christ from today forward. It's an act of washing, right? I go down into the water, the, the old defiled me, and I come up out of the water, the purified new me, right? It is a representation of dying and being born anew, right? I'm buried with Christ, and I'm raised with Christ to new life. I'm dead to sin and alive to God. Okay, so when is baptism appropriate? Right away. Just as soon as you're ready to make a demonstration of your intention to be loyal to the Lord Jesus. Okay, this man certainly is ready. He'd been reading the scriptures. He already believed in the God of the Jews and worshipped him. Really, the only thing missing was he needed to have it explained to him that all the promises of a Messiah that were in the scriptures 
have been kept and have been fulfilled in Jesus of Nazareth. And Philip's there to explain that. He shared the news and, yes, I understand and know he's the Son of God. Uh, what would hinder you then? Okay, there's nothing any longer in his way. What would hinder you? Well, I guess if you didn't um, understand why you need a Savior, then, yeah, you're not ready for baptism. Uh, if you thought that you are a good enough person and you already have some uh, good deeds under your belt and you think that you deserve eternal life, then you're not ready for baptism. Uh, if you think, well, I appreciate Christianity, I like it, but I also happen to think that other roads lead to God, you're not ready for baptism. Uh, if all you want is to have your name written on the church register, you're not ready for baptism. Uh, if you want to get baptized because your parents are putting pressure on you, or the pastor is, or your fiancé wants you to convert, well, you're not ready for baptism. Uh, just believing that I believe in God, right? Just I believe there is a God and that God is good, you're still not ready, okay? What hinders you, maybe there is something that, that you know, there are things that hinder a person, but the clear testimony of God is that he has raised his son up from the dead. He's put all authority into his hands and given him charge of the judgment of the world. And he calls us to purify ourselves as he is pure and come out from the realm of darkness and walk in the light as he is in the light. Right? And get prepared for the triumphal return of Jesus. And if you're not ready to do that, then you're not ready to be baptized. Okay, so Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Okay, so to believe with all my heart means to believe with a deep, abiding conviction. Right? I'm convinced. Uh, it's to believe also with feeling, with uh, emotions like gratitude and uh, affection for the Lord, um, with a sense of your need because of sin and a sense of deep relief because my need has been met, and also a sense of resolve to go forward now and devote my life uh, to obedience, right? And if that applies to you, well, it's time to get baptized. So uh, here we have a baptism class. The reason we have a baptism class isn't just to make things difficult and, you know, give you some obstacle, a hoop to jump through before you can join, uh, you know, First Baptist requires it, so I had to do it. No, it's to have that conversation to make sure that a new believer understands all those things. Okay, do you understand? Do you believe with all your heart? But the eunuch had a baptism class, if you want to put it that way. You know, that was covered by his conversation with Philip. And he was actually already pretty far along. Uh, he knew a lot of things that uh, your average person today might not even know. Uh, for example, he already knew that the world is under the curse of sin. He already knew there's only one God, and it's the God of Israel, right? The God of the Red Sea and the, the Ten Commandments and King David and, and the prophets. He already knew that. He already knew that God is a righteous judge and the day of the Lord is coming. And he knows that God is compassionate to those who fear him and he devises means so that his vanished ones are not expelled from him forever, right? He knows that God made promises a long time ago to save which he intends to keep, okay? So the Ethiopian already was pretty far ahead of, of most people, and he's like the one that Jesus said to him, you're not that far from the kingdom of God, okay? And Philip could tell where he was, and that his faith was genuine, and that his understanding was real, and that he knew what he was about to get into, and he also knew what he's coming out of. Okay? That's why we have a baptism class or a membership class. You know, if somebody comes to us from another church, you know, it's not uh, we're going to baptize you all over again, but you know, we don't know what you know. We don't know what you've been taught. You know, we have to um, see, find out what kind of understanding do you have and the purpose of the class is to have a little person-to-person -person instruction so that we can say, yes, this man or this woman uh, understands the good news of Christ and is ready to pledge himself to follow him and be a, an organic part of this body of, of uh, disciples. So that's the will of God, right? That people would come out of the world of darkness 
and be joined to the Son of God and to his people whom he loves. And baptism is how uh, we are, are to mark that turning point. So now, in our days and in our sort of part of the larger church body around the world, um, evangelicalism, or if you want to call it uh, fundamentalism or something like that, um, almost all the emphasis has come to be on getting people to say the sinner's prayer. And, right? You're, you uh, take a little class or a course on evangelism or methods or something like that, and you know, you, it's almost like your objective is to steer the conversation until the person says the sinner's prayer. You know, you go downstairs and look at the gospel tracts that we have, I would bet 80% of them um, end with trying to get the reader to say the sinner's prayer. You know, you have this little slip of paper that takes you one minute to read, and presumably by the time you're done reading this little slip of paper, you're ready to say the sinner's prayer. Uh, the Good News Clubs and children's Sunday school material, it's almost always, if the child responds, you know, take him or her aside and talk to them and, and have them, you know, lead them in the sinner's prayer to ask Jesus into their life. There's not a mention of baptism, almost ever, as part of that event in their life. Okay? Many preachers will end every one of their messages by saying, now everybody bow your head, close your eyes, and if you want to receive Jesus right now, pray this prayer with me. But as for baptism, we'll just do that whenever. Like, if ever. Someday we'll get around. No! What do you mean, someday? Are you convinced that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you want his presence in your life? Do you want to tell the world that you're a Christian? Then make the public declaration. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, and be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus commanded it. And that was the universal practice of the early church. This is how you will take to yourself the sign of salvation. Okay, and it's a little bit parallel to a, a wedding ring at a wedding ceremony. Right? With this ring, I thee wed. Here's the sign of my vow. In the presence of God and these witnesses, I enter into a bond with Jesus Christ, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer or for poorer, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish, from this day forward, so help me God. Happy day. Happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. And there's the family of God standing by to say, congratulations, brother, and hallelujah. Okay? And so, of course, what follows after the washing and the renewal by the Holy Spirit is this flooding of joy. Right? The, the Spirit catches Philip away, and the Ethiopian went on his way rejoicing. And wow, what an experience this man just had. Uh, you know, you might think, why didn't the Holy Spirit leave Philip there with him just a little while, you know, and go on and teach him some more? But the Spirit himself now and the Scriptures are going to be the Ethiopian man's uh, instructors from now on. Okay? He takes Philip away as soon as they come out of the water and he drops him off some other place. But it says in 1 John, you have an anointing now from the Holy Spirit. You have the word which you heard since the beginning, and the anointing that you have teaches you all things. It's in 1 John. Okay, so the Ethiopian man has the key now to unlock the scriptures. He knows that Jesus Christ, the, the crucified one, the risen one, he's there in the book that I have already. And that's all he needs to know. And he can go and read everything else, and he'll find everything he needs for life and godliness in the Bible from now on. And what I particularly find uh, very touching and awesome is pretty soon when he settles down, you know, he's going to, as they continue on their way, he's going to pick up his Isaiah again and, you know, continue on from where he left off, which was chapter 53. So in chapter 56, it says this. Thus saith the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and lays hold on it, who keeps the Sabbath holy and keeps his hand from doing evil. Let not the foreigner 
who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord has separated me utterly from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, here I am, just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuch who keeps my Sabbath and chooses what pleases me and holds fast my covenant, even to him I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall never be cut off. And the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants, who keep his Sabbath holy and hold fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, and their offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And the man's jaw must just drop when he reads that. I mean, wow, that was written just for you, Mr. Ethiopian. And like we just sang, how firm a foundation indeed, you saint of the Lord, was laid for your faith in this excellent word. Here, come, here came this man over the hilltop. He's preaching to you the good news. You discovered your Savior. And then you see the man caught away. And who can doubt that God himself just reached right into your life and made you one of his? Now you go home and you tell people there everything the Son of God has just done for you. And you can just not imagine this man's joy. Okay? What hinders you from having this man's joy? Now, I would hope, saints, that we would all know the blessings of a, a spirit-filled baptism, that public pledge of uh, that confession of Jesus Christ as Lord of all and Lord of you, right? Blessings which, and I say it respectfully, but blessings which saying the sinner's prayer all by itself can't produce. Okay? Certainly, a prayer of contrition and trust is, of course, totally natural and appropriate, and it is the right response to the gospel call, to the word of God. Okay? But Jesus appointed baptism to be our act of marking the turning point. Right? You've taken to yourself the appointed sign, the, the token of the presence of the Spirit of God. You've enacted the new birth. And afterwards, you know that you just called on the name of the Lord and he heard your voice. Right? God has received you. He washed you. He's begotten you into a new life. He's given you a place in his house. He's removed your guilt. He's cleansed your conscience. And it is well with my soul. Okay, you made your decision. You openly dedicated yourself to walk on the path of obedience. You've joined the great congregation of the born again. What a day. Now to you who have been baptized in such a way, remember the joy of that day. Right? Remember your prayer. Remember the gush of the water. Uh, remember how full your heart was. Uh, remember your sense of peace, how it felt like you were setting out on a brand new path. And so when days that are harder or heavier come, which they will, of course, recall then how the promises of God were sealed to you and how you gave yourself to Jesus Christ. And he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. He said, whoever comes to me, I will never cast them away. And just keep going back to your Bible to see Jesus there. In the Word, you see both the terrible, messy state of the world, but you also see how God is ready to be gracious to sinners. Okay? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He's never going to leave us or forsake us. If we confess him before men, he's going to confess us before the Father in heaven. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him and he with us. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Okay, you just remember your pledge to him and his to you. And if you don't have that and you want that, then know that, and you know that Jesus Christ is the Savior, and something's telling you, I, I must be saved, right? I must make haste and be joined to the family of God. And then, like I said, know that God is ready to be gracious every minute. 
And please, come and ask whatever questions it is you need to have answered, and let's remove whatever obstacles or hindrances there may be to being baptized into Christ and obtaining the precious peace of God the Father. Peace like a river, the scripture said. Right? Your peace would be like a river, and, and you'll never forget the day. You will never forget it. Maybe you're a longtime churchgoer, and you believe the gospel, but you haven't taken this step. Well, remember, this is what Jesus appointed. It's his will for you. Testify your faith in him through your baptism. Uh, maybe you're interested in the, the word, but you don't know what to do next. Well, like I said, let's go through and make sure you're clear on who Christ is and what he has done and what God's call on your life and is. Hear the voice of Jesus calling you. Come follow me and respond. All right, Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you, Father, for your goodwill to the sons of men. Uh, we bless you, Lord God, that you are uh, a, a redeemer of sinners. And Jesus Christ, our Savior, we bow the knee to you. We worship you as our King and Master. And we understand it's only because of you and what you've done that we have anything at all. Uh, so we rejoice in the knowledge of uh, reconciliation with God. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be uh, messengers to the world around us, to, uh, to be like Philip and bring good news where it's needed, to explain the gospel, to explain Christ, and uh, to bring those, Lord, to uh, this kind of place of rejoicing where this man, uh, such an, uh, an envious uh, happiness, Lord, he is, he, is, uh, he is to be, he is a man to be envied, uh, how, how joyful he was. And uh, Father, we want to see that reproduced in those around us and in our family members. And uh, we just pray, dear Father, through your Holy Spirit, you would uh, do that good work through us and bring others into your kingdom. In Christ we pray. Amen.